Right, good morning or good evening or good afternoon, uh, wherever you are in the world today. Welcome to today's Let's Code section session. Uh, it's my first for the year, so Happy New Year to those of you who are joining us for the first time this year. Uh, maybe some of you have done workshops already this year, but it's my first. So looking forward to, to kicking the year off. Um, while you're joining, uh, if you're going to code along with me today, please make sure you've got your, your local WordPress installation ready. ready. You've got your code editor ready, and then you can go ahead and download the plugin zip file and install that on your WordPress site. Um, this is a very simple little plugin that I wrote a number of years ago when I presented this same topic uh, at a WordCamp. Uh, ironically, the WordCamp that I met Thelma, who is my co-host today. So a little bit of a tie in there for you, Thelma. <laughs> um, Hello. Cool. So happy new year to everybody who's joining. Um, let us know where you're joining us from, those of you who are coming in for the first time. Uh, my name is Jonathan. I'm from Cape Town in South Africa. Uh, I'm not going to run through all the bits and pieces of who I am. I just want to mention before we get started, I am extremely tired today. I was saying this to Thelma earlier. Um, I had a very bad night's sleep last night, and I've been drinking way too much coffee just to stay awake. So I apologize if things go a little bit wonky today. I'm going to do my best. Uh, but please be, be uh -uh. with me. Um, okay. There we go. Uh, so just going through some announcements. Um, again, welcome and happy new year to everybody. Uh, welcome and thank you to Thelma, who's co-hosting with me today. Um, we are, as always, presenting in focus mode, but please do feel free to enable your video if you'd like to meet see you at least. Um, focus mode is just to prevent any kind of Zoom bombing from happening. We unfortunately had a situation where uh, one of our other workshop presenters was Zoom bombed yesterday, so we're sticking with focus mode for 2023. It does seem to work pretty well. Uh, as always, you are welcome to ask questions, um, and you're welcome to either post them in the chat or unmute to ask questions. Uh, the only thing that I do ask is if you please can keep your questions, if they're related to what we're doing on screen, you're welcome to stop me and ask the question. Like. If something isn't clear, uh, you're welcome to, to ask questions. Otherwise, if your question is not specifically related to what we're doing on screen, uh, then just keep it for one of the pauses that we will that we will leave. Um, today, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to I'm going to show you the code that we're working with, and then I'm going to, as we're working through the workshop, I'm going to ask for your input as to where you think we should implement these these security practices that we're going to be implementing today. So hopefully, you'll be able to, to interact a little bit more today. Um, then, if you haven't already, if you want to code along with me, please do install the plugin. It's a very simple one, one PHP file, one JavaScript file plugin. Um, if I'm going too fast, please do slow me down. Let me know. There is a chance of that happening today because of the tiredness and the and the coffee. Um, uh, but we will be posting the session to WordPress TV afterwards, sometime during the course of the day tomorrow. Uh, and if you're looking for any other WordPress focused content, uh, please do visit learn.wordpress.org, which is where all of this information, tutorials, uh, lesson plans, workshops are all linked or hosted through. Um, okay. <laughs> Adrian says, been listening to you on 1.5 in the recording, so you sound very slow and mellow. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, it's something that I've, I've really tried to work on. It's just kind of slowing myself down because I tend to get very excited and just not very fast and do ramble off and off I go. <laughs> Um, okay, so today we're going to be focusing specifically on plugin security. We're going back to the world of PHP today. I'm not doing a little bit of JavaScript, but mostly PHP today because that's where all the data is sent back and forth. Um, we're going to be talking about sanitizing our inputs, doing data validation, escaping our outputs, preventing in invalid requests, and how to prevent authenticated unauth unauthenticated users from performing actions. Um, we're not going to be diving into those topics super, super in depth. I'm going to be giving you a, a very quick overview of each of these, and hopefully it'll give you some documentation and some reading material that you can go all further and down deeper rabbit holes. Um, plugin security when you're developing plugins or if you're developing themes that have plugin-like functionality is something that should always be at the forefront of your mind when you're writing code. Um, and, and so it's a good idea to understand all of these things, understand all the basics of how they work. And then when you're working with different types of data, you can think about, well, how should I sanitize this input or how should I validate this data or how should I uh, prevent something from going wrong? 
Um, so our goal today is we're going to install and look at the plugin that I wrote, and we will see that it is a perfectly functional plugin, but it has no security. It's not thinking about security at all. So it's open to all kinds of, of vulnerabilities. Uh, and then we're going to look at any kind of incoming data that we're receiving from the user and how we would sanitize that. We're going to also look at how we can validate that data. Now, the data that we're working with today is not very complex, but there's a couple of options that we're going to look at for data validation. Um, then we're going to look at how we escape data being rendered to the browser and why you would do that. Uh, then we're going to look at uh, securing form submissions because those submissions are being posted and we need to secure the, those, those fields. And we're going to secure an AJAX request as well. And we'll talk a little bit about AJAX and REST API at the same time. Um, and then we're also going to look at how you can ensure that any admin specific actions can only be performed by an admin. And we'll talk about user permissions and user capabilities uh, within the WordPress space. Um, before we get started, I want to uh, share something with you that I just thought of that I think would be uh, useful. And I think it's Haku. I'm not sure. I'm not going to find it now. But basically, one of the, um, I don't mind sharing my Twitter. Uh, I think it's hack, hack like that. Yes. Um, so one of the secure, one of the WordPress security companies, Patchstack, um, they've created a, a Twitter uh, account, a Twitter wapu called Haku, um, and Haku uh, regularly shares any security vulnerabilities and plugins in the wild. Um, so if you're the kind of person who's using plugins that are that are downloadable and you want to know about these vulnerabilities when they come out, I do recommend. Um, following this Twitter profile. And if you go through them, you'll see a lot of the kind of vulnerabilities that they talk about, cross-site cross, cross -site scripting, uh, privilege ex escalation, uh, SQL injection. Um, they're, they're, they're very, very common. They happen a lot. A lot of this is cross-site scripting again. There's cross-site scripting again, um, untrusted data. And if you if you follow the, the four or five principles that we're going to be talking about today, you will prevent the majority of these kind of issues in any kind of plugins or themes with plugin like functionality you create so i do recommend following this twitter account if you are on twitter um and keeping up to date with these kind of vulnerabilities so that you can understand uh what it means when they talk about these different kind of things and when you're developing your plugins it's at the forefront of your mind okay i'm going to pop that link in the chat quickly uh just so that folks have it if they if they want to follow that account okay so um, let's go through the plugin itself before we get started so we can understand what it's doing. If you want to have a look at the code on GitHub, this is the URL for it. Um, I have created both a insecure and a secure version. So if you click on releases, uh, you will see that there is this insecure plugin, which is the one you've downloaded and installed today on your site if you're following along. And then there's a secure version, which you can download after the session and you can have a look at the code. Basically, what we're going to be coding today is the secure version anyway. But if you're just following along and you want to see what the secure code looks like, you can get it from there. Uh, it's also in a branch in this repository. So if you go to the little branch drop down on the top left there, you can switch to the feature more secure plugin branch. Um, and then you can have a look through the plugin code and you can see all the changes. And I'm going to leave that open so I can refer back to it if I forget something later. Okay. So what does the plugin do? Let's open up the plugin code first so we can see what it does. So I'll open up um, my Visual Code Studio. And I'm going to browse over to the WP Learn plugin security directory in the plugins directory in WordPress. And I'm going to open up the plugin security PHP file. Um, and we're just going to run through this code fairly quickly. And then I'll pause at the end if there are any questions. Um, there are a couple of constants being created that I'm using at the top of this plugin here. Um, the one is, I'm going to just keep it there. The first two are just uh, URL slugs that I'm using to redirect users around, and I'll show you how those get used in a second. Um, and the second two are just uh, URL and path constants that I like to set up in all of my plugins. Um, so I can reuse those if I need to um, link to a file in the plugin URL or find a file in the plugin path. Uh, then I'm setting up a custom table. Uh, the main reason I'm doing a custom table for this plugin is purely just because it's easier to insert simple data into a custom table. Uh, don't worry too much about what that's doing today. We're not focusing on, on creating tables today. We're going to be doing a future workshop on that, I'm, I'm sure, at some point in time, but that's the code for how that works. But basically, it's a table called uh, form submissions, and it just has a name field and an email field. 
and then an ID uh, primary key. That, that's all that exists there. So we're going to be creating a form that requires the name and email address and then stores it in the database. Then there is the good old admin NQ scripts action, which if you've worked with plugins or WordPress themes at all before, you'll know that this sets up any kind of custom JavaScript or CSS or whatever you need. Um, and it's basically enqueuing this ad assets admin.js file, which we'll look at in a second. Um, and it's creating the uh, Ajax object, which is used for any kind of Ajax functionality. Uh, if you've never seen this before, don't worry too much. I'll show you how this is working in a second. Um, Elizabeth says, are you screen sharing? Can I only see your video, but not your screen? Um, I've had folks had this, have this problem before, Elizabeth. Um, are you perhaps running on a Linux workstation by any chance? <laughs> uh, I am screen sharing, and I think most folks are seeing this. Uh, yes, so they, this is a known problem that I'm still trying to solve. Um, I need to test this with one of my one of my colleagues. I have an Ubuntu workstation sitting right next to me here, but I, I, I present on a Mac. And I've ex been experiencing problems with Zoom on, on Linux having some issues. Um, so I've got it on my to-do list that I'm hoping to get to this year, but unfortunately I don't have a workaround for you right now, so I'm sorry. Um, if you have the code open, you should be able to follow along while I'm talking um, and, and let me know if you get stuck, but I do apologize. And I will I will figure it out this year. Um, okay, so, so that's the, the enqueuing of the JavaScript assets. Uh, then we have the submission form code. Uh, and I'm just using a very simple short code. In this case, it's wp underscore learn underscore form underscore short code. Uh, if you're following along and, you, and you're looking at the code, it's on line 71. And all that's doing is outputting a very simple HTML form with a hidden value, a name field, an email field, and a submit button. That's nothing special. Um, it's using output buffering to just kind of gather the content and then spit it out to the screen. Then below that on line 98, I am uh, hooking into the WP action, and I am uh, hooking that to the WP learn maybe process form function. And what that does is that checks whether the hidden field WP learn form has been submitted in a request. And if it has been submitted, then we need to process the form. Um, and this is a common way to handle form submissions using PHP in a WordPress environment is hook into one of the early actions, check if the field is there, and then process that submission. There are other ways of doing it, but this is just one way. Um, what I'm doing in this function is I am getting the name and email values from the posted form, which is this dollar underscore post variable. It's an array. Uh, and then I basically create an instance of the, or access an instance of the WordPress database object. Um, and I insert the name and email fields into the database record or as a record into the database. If everything goes fine, then I redirect to the learn slug, the, sorry, the success slug. If there's any problems, then I redirect to the error slug and I'll show you how the redirection works in a second. Um, then additionally, I've created an admin menu, uh, sub menu item in the dashboard. And that's basically going to take us to a list of all the submissions in the, in the admin interface. Um, this is this is fairly straightforward. If you have seen this before, if you haven't, it's just basically creating this WP Learn admin page link. Uh, it's saying that the permissions are for anybody who can manage options, or in other words, an administrator. Uh, and then it has um, a callback function, function, which then calls the function just below that, which is the WP Learn render admin page function. That just renders an admin page. It gets all the form submissions from the database using this WP learn get form submissions function, and then creates a div with some data, loops through the submissions and presents them on screen. Um, then the learn learn get form submissions function uh, that basically just pulls the submissions from the database. Um, and then finally, there's an Ajax hook to delete form submissions. So you'll see in the uh, render admin page function, there is a delete submission uh anchor with a class delete submission and if you click on that it triggers some javascript which which creates an ajax request to this uh learn delete form submission function which gets the id from the ajax request and deletes that record based on the id in the database um so that's all the php code some of you might have seen some of the security issues there already uh if you have great make some notes i'm going to ask you later if you have it not to worry um, and then the last bit of code I want to look at is the admin.js uh, JavaScript file in this plugin. This effectively just handles the Ajax request. So when you click on 
the delete submission anchor for any of the records. It will um, get the button. It'll get the ID from the data attribute in the button. And then it makes a post request to the WordPress Ajax URL, which if you look back in the PHP code, that Ajax URL is set up right at the top here when we enqueue the admin um, JS file. We use this localized script. So what that basically does, it creates an object called WP Learn Ajax and passes any information in this array as object properties in the in the code. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, and it then will post specifically this action, delete form submission, which is how Ajax works in WordPress. And then it sends through the ID value as well. Um, and then once that's finished, then it, it just says form submission deleted if everything worked correctly. Um, in this Ajax post, I don't have a failure set up um, on purpose. I've done it that way on purpose, but you would typically have like a success event and a failure event and various other things. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible, um, but that's basically what that does. Okay. While you're looking through this code or while I've discussed this code with you all, is there any questions around what things are doing? Did you see anything that you maybe didn't understand? Uh, we, we can't dive too much into the functionality of how it works and, and what the different pieces are today, because that's going to be many different um, uh, workshops. But is there anything that didn't quite make sense about how I explained the code? I'll show you all the functionality in a second, but I just want to make sure if there are any questions uh, around this code at this point in time. Okay, so there don't seem to be any questions there. That's good. I'm sure there might be questions that come up later, but let's have a look and see what this code actually does. Um, so to make this code work, if you want to test this code on your side, there's a couple of pages you need to create first. The first page you'll need to create is called um, the submission form page. Uh, and what I would like you to do if you are creating these pages is please um, create them with the same. So first step, before we do this, first step. Please make sure that you have permalinks enabled in some shape or form on your local environment. Um, so don't leave it on the first, if you go into settings permalinks, don't leave it on the plain option, which is the default that ships with WordPress. Switch it to the, either the post name or day and name, month and name, whatever. I generally stick it on post name because I like to keep it simple. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to use the page slugs in the code and it'll make it easier to tie those things up. Um, so if you haven't already, please go into your settings permalinks and switch your permalink structure to post name for today to make everything easier. And then scroll to the bottom and hit save changes. Okay, then once you've done that, then I'd like you to create a page. And the first page you can create, I want you to create it with a title of submission form. And the reason I want to do that is because then it will create a slug called submission hyphen form, which we're going to use as a submission form today. Um, inside of that form, I want you to add the short code. So I'm using the block editor, which means I need to add the shortcode block. If you're using the classic editor, you can just add the shortcode to the content. Either way works. But I'm going to need to add the shortcode block. So I add the shortcode block here. And then I pop the shortcode with the square brackets. So it's WP underscore learn underscore form underscore shortcode. And I paste that in there. Then I'm going to publish this page, or in my case, I'm updating it. And if you then view that page, you should see something that looks like this. It's a very simple form. I've got no cool styling. So it's just all jammed up on top of each other. It looks horrible, um, but it's just the name and it's requiring a name and an email address requiring an email address and there's a submit button. So that's what you should be seeing. I'm gonna run through the pages very quickly uh, and then you, we can stop if there are any problems as we go through. The second page I'd like you to create is the uh, success page. And I would like you to create it with a title form success page specifically so that it sets up a permalink slug of form hyphen success hyphen page. And the reason for that is because it then matches the slug that we've set in the plugin. If your page slug is something else, you can either update the slug in the plugin or you can update the slug yourself manually, um, but otherwise it's not gonna work. So either create it with just form success pages, the slug or update it yourself in either the plugin code or another way. And then just give it a message. Mine just says, thank you for your submission or the form was submitted successfully, whatever the case may be. Um, this is a very simple way of creating success in error pages. There's, there's better ways of doing this, but I'm just keeping it very simple today. Okay, so if I click on that page, I can actually go straight to that page uh, and it'll show me the, the message. 
I typically wouldn't link that anywhere so that folks can find it, but it's there just for the purposes of today. Then the third and last page I'd like you to create is the form error page. And for the same reasons as we did for the form success page, please call this page form error page uh, so that the slug is form hyphen error hyphen page, which as I mentioned, same with the success matches the slug we specified in the plugin. Um, and that can have some kind of error message if you like, uh, something went wrong, whatever you would like to do, uh, create and publish that page. Once all those pages are created, what you should see when you, oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention, make sure you have the plugin activated, installed and activated, so it's there, it's ready to go. Uh, I have it activated on my site. Once that's all working, what should happen is if you click on the submission form and you type in a name, so I'm going to put my name here, uh, Jonathan Bossinger, and I'm going to put down my email address because I don't mind my my personal email address being public because Gmail is very good with spam filters, uh, and I hit submit. It's going to take that information, it's going to save it into the database, and it's going to give me the form success page response. The way that I can check whether it's in the database is, as I mentioned earlier, the plugin is also creating a, a dashboard menu, which if I scroll right to the bottom here below settings on my site, there is the WP Learn Admin page link. If I click on that, it takes me to a very simple page, which has a couple of, of er entries on my site already, but I've got my John Doe, my Jane Doe, and my Jonathan Bossinger uh, at gmail.com. Okay. Is anybody who's doing all of this following along, is anybody struggling with this? I'm going to take a break if anybody's struggling with getting their things working. Um, and then I'm going to show you what the delete functionality does. I'm running out of coffee, but I shouldn't have any more. So. <laughs> okay, so Ryan's got his working. That's excellent. Um, I kept it. There's, there's many better ways to handle messages. You know, you could display it in line on the form so folks can do it again. I'm just keeping it very simple because I want to do very simple redirections. The focus today is on plugin security, not on, you know, building forms. Okay. What I'd like to just quickly show you here is I'm going to hit F12 on my keyboard to open up my dev tools, my browser dev tools. Um, depending on your browser, it'll be a different set of keyboard combinations in Chrome. You should also be able to click on the three... Uh, either dots or lines or the hamburger menu or whatever it is and go down to, I think it's more tools and then developer tools or use any one of the keyboard combinations. Um, and then if we click on over to the elements area and in this area, you can do a control or command F and you can search for WP learn. Uh, now I'm going to look, at it, look for it in the code because I cannot remember. I'm looking for this object, WP learn Ajax, there it is. So it's WP Learn Ajax. There it is. Okay, let's make this code a little bit bigger so we can see it. So this is the the, the JavaScript object that we create by using the um, WP localized script function. And you'll see that it has this Ajax URL variable, uh, or at least um, uh, item. There it is, Ajax URL. And it passes in the path to my local site, WP admin, admin Ajax.php. So that's the file in WordPress that accepts Ajax requests. Um, so that's what is, that is what's happening when we use this WP localized script business over here. So that's great. So we know that that's working. Um, and what's going to happen when I, as I mentioned before, when I click on delete here, let's switch back to the code, this code will run, it'll get the ID value and it's going to do some console logging. So we can see when the delete button is clicked, we can see what the delete submission ID is, and then we can see the response. So when the delete, let me go back to the console. So the plugin security admin JS is loaded. When we hit delete, there it is. Delete button is clicked. The delete submission ID is five. And then it has a response array. And then it says form submission deleted. Um, and it refreshes the page. Okay, so that's one way that it's doing deletions. Um, and if we have a look at this code, you'll see what it's doing is it logs the response. It alerts and says form submission deleted. And then it does a document location reload. So it refreshes the page. Okay, so that works. So that's great. Our plugin works. We can ship it 100% 100 happy. Okay, the problem is this plugin has issues. So let's go and switch back to our documentation. Okay, before we continue, any questions around the functionality? Has everybody got their functionality working? Are they able to add and delete and, and everything's working fine? Um, if anybody's plugins are not working, please let me know, but it should all be good if you've got your pages working. Um, okay. So plugin security is so important that the WordPress developer plugin handbook has an entire section on plugin security. 
And that section you'll see if you go to developer.wordpress.org plugins slash plugins slash security has actually been uh, redirected to a special security page in the common API's handbook. So when I first started developing plugins, um, it was actually all in the old WordPress codex. Then that, that the stuff from the WordPress codex was moved over to the developer handbook. And I used to spend, uh, so funny enough, my timing of entering the WordPress community was when that move was happening. So I used to spend a lot of time jumping between the two because things were still being changed and things were still being updated. But then the plugin security section in the handbook became sort of my go-to when I was checking on these things because I can never remember where everything was. Um, it's been a while since I've used it because I haven't developed plugins for a while, but I see that they've moved it now to a separate security page. And that's over here. And what's really nice about the security page is it includes some further information about why plugin security is important. And it also talks about developing a security mindset, which I think is really useful and really important. And I want to read through that section with you today, just so that we understand the things that we need to think of. So when developing, it is important to, to consider security as you add functionality. Use the following principles as you progress through your development efforts. Number one, don't trust any data, okay? Um, for those of you who might remember a movie called, I think it's Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, there's a there's a ABC, always always be closing line from that movie. It's got to do with selling. I have, I have adopted that ABC for my development purposes, and I have changed to always be checking. So I am always checking everything all the time. Uh, don't trust anything. Don't trust user input. Don't trust your users to put the right thing in the field. Don't trust your, trust your third-party API to send you the right data. Don't trust your data in your database <laughs> that you might have put there. Um, so don't trust anything. And that's the first thing that you should always, always uh, be thinking about when you're working. Always make sure to validate and sanitize user input and to escape output. Uh, and there's a concept of, and we'll talk about it in a second, escape uh, as late as possible and sanitize as early as possible. Okay. Then it says rely on the WordPress API. So many core WordPress functions provide the built-in functionality of validating and sanitizing data, which we're going to learn about today. So don't use you know, your own code. Rely on what WordPress is doing. Many security experts have spent numerous hours updating these core functions to make sure they're secure. So why not rely on them? Um, and then keep your code up to date. So as technology evolves, so does the potential for new security holes. So stay vigilant. So as I said earlier, keep an eye on, on security platforms, keep an eye on security sites, follow that Twitter, that Twitter account so that you know what's going on in the world of security. Um, and then it talks about guiding principles. So again, never trust user input. Escape as late as possible, which we'll talk about in a second. Escape anything from untrusted sources. So databases and users, third parties, Never assume anything. Never assume that, oh, this data is fine. It's in my database. Look, it'll be fine. Um, and then it says san sanitation is okay, but validation rejection is even better. So we'll talk about that in a second as we go through, through the plugin. Okay. So let's start with the first uh, page in the section called sanitizing data. And sanitizing data is basically taking any information that we're putting into our code and making sure that it's clean and safe and secure. So... What I would like to do now is if, if anybody feels like answering this question, if we have a think about or have a look at the plugin code, um, what are the first obvious places where we could be sanitizing data as it's as it's flowing through that plugin functionality? You're welcome to unmute and answer if you would like. You're welcome to, to paste your answers in the chat. Okay, so Jabam has got the jumped on the gun, name and email input, 100%. So that is the very first thing we should be sanitizing is the name and email input, okay? Um, so let's have a look at that code. Anywhere else that anybody can think of while they're looking through the code there? Okay. So there aren't really many more fields than the name and input. Um, and the reason that that is the most obvious one is let's have a look at what that code is doing when we get the name and, and email. So first of all here, we're just getting it from the post array. Now the post array is created when a for HTML form is posted to PHP. And all PHP does is get the form fields and put them into an array. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. It doesn't check if they're valid. It doesn't check if they're safe. It doesn't check if anybody's adding anything that they shouldn't. So what I want to do as an example, um, and this probably will work, but I'm not sure because I haven't tested it. But if I, for example, do John, and then I pass in a script tag, 
and I do alert hello. So this is basically just JavaScript code that I'm popping in here. And I do a script here. Um, and then I put in just a regular old email address. And let's see what happens to that. Okay, so that's saved. Fine, happy days. Let's refresh our admin page. And look at that. We have some JavaScript code running because we inserted it into the database. Okay, now that's obviously a very simple example, but that is how easily it happens. So if your data is not being sanitized, people can inject JavaScript code, which could then include something which calls an API and does a whole bunch of things. Um, and it's, it's really that simple. Now, what you should also do is you should also, before the data gets stored in the database, do some kind of sanitization and escaping. But if you sanitize the name and the email early, then you don't have to worry about that. So let's let's look at um, and funny enough, when I when I used to do uh, plugin vetting when I worked for a company called Codable, that's one of the first things we used to test. We used to just test: can I insert script hello? Um, and you'll be surprised how many so-called WordPress experts allow that to happen. So it still happens to the best of us. Okay. So here's an example. They say, say we have an input field named title. Um, we could use validation. We can't use validation here because the text field is too general. We'll talk about validation in a second. Uh, so it could be anything. So we sanitize the input data with the sanitize text field function. Okay. The sanitization functions are all listed be below here. So you can use all kinds of functions within WordPress. You can sanitize emails, file name, hex colors, HTML classes, pretty much anything that you can think about that might get posted. You, there's a sanitize function for it. So we're going to use the sanitize text field function for our name. So I'm going to copy that code out over there. I'm going to switch back to my plugin. And all I need to do is wrap this post name array with sanitize text field. Okay. Um, and what I am going to need to do before I do that is just delete the bad one with the, with the dodgy JavaScript. Um, so that we make sure that doesn't happen anymore. So there, I've just deleted that one. Um, so in my plugin code, I've got, I'm sanitizing the name now. And what that does is that runs it through a series of functions that cleans out any scripts, any dodgy things, and it should allow us to simply post that name. So let's see if that still works. So let's pop back on over here and let me find my, sorry, uh, Zoom has just decided to make my life difficult. Um, go away, Zoom. Uh, sorry, folks. Let's go back to the form. There we go. Okay, so now let's go back to the submission form and let's do that same test again. So let's do a poll and let's try and insert a script. Um, and we'll make it high this time. And then we'll close the script. And then we'll give it an email address. Just try that email. Well, actually, his name is Paul. So let's make it Paul. And we submit that. But now if we refresh, we shouldn't see any kind of errors. Excellent. So Paul was sanitized. It's all nice and clean. We can keep that data. OK. The other one is the email, as uh, Shabam has mentioned. And in the list over here, you will see that there is also a sanitized email field. So we can use that specifically for emails. So if we go back into our code, we can sanitize the email. That's great. There we go. Email has been sanitized. So now if we try to do any kind of JavaScript or any fun funny things in there, that'll also clean that up. Okay. So that's step one done. So we've sanitized our fields. Now, as mentioned, if we go back here, um, it's, it's not listed here, but there used to be a, a, a sort of a saying somewhere I remember reading about sanitize early and escape late. So what that means is as soon as I capture this data, I want to be sanitizing. I could do this in two ways. I could either leave it the way I've got it here where I'm sanitizing the post name, or I could do something like this and I could just go name equals and just say post name. Um, and then I could do it again and then sanitize. Let me get that sanitize text field. And I could do something like this. Now, this seems a little bit redundant, um, but sometimes you might need to do this because you've got other variables happening or floating around or whatever the case may be. So there's multiple ways that you can do this. But it's super, super important to make sure you do it as early as possible. I shouldn't be sanitizing here at this point. Um, I should be sanitizing as soon as I'm capturing that data from the post or the get or the request, whatever type of request it is. Okay, 
So that's sanitizing data. Any questions around sanitizing data? Cool, there don't seem to be any questions. The great thing about the, the security page here in the Common APIs Handbook, as with all the rest we're gonna look at today, is there's lots of nice examples. There's links to all the functions. Uh, so I recommend reading through these and then going and reading up about those functions and what they do and understanding how they work. It would be nice if these link through to the function itself, um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, the next thing to look at is validating data. Now, what do we mean by validating data? So validating input is the process of testing the data against a predefined pattern or patterns. Okay, so for example, let's say you are receiving a, I don't know, a social security number or, a, or an ID number or something like that. Um, those, those numbers, um, you know, in, in, in South Africa, it's an ID number. In the States, I think it's called a social security number. Those numbers follow, or a credit card number is another good example. Those numbers generally follow a specific format. And there are functions that you can either write or find on the internet that will validate those fields against those types of formats. And simple validations include checking that the fields have not been left blank. For example, checking that a phone number only contains numbers and punctuation. Checking that a requested string is one of five options. So let's say you have a drop down and the options are one, two, three, four, five. Make sure that six hasn't been posted because then you don't know what's going to happen. Or checking that a quantity field or an ID field or an integer field is actually a, a valid integer. Um, and here it speaks about also that data validation should be for, performed as early as possible. So just as we should sanitize our data as early as possible, we should perform validation as early as possible. Now, in the code that we're working with, there is one field that exists, I think, in two places that we should validate um, to make sure it's correct. Can anybody think of where that might be? Uh, give me a shout in the chat or via, via audio if you would like to. Yeah, Elizabeth says maybe email address. Not a bad idea. Um, the nice thing about sanitized email is it will do sort of data validation as well. Uh, it'll check that it is a valid format. It can't check that it's an actual valid email address, but it'll check that it's in a valid format. Uh, but there's another field in there that we could do some additional validation to. We don't need to sanitize it, but we need to, let me give you a clue. We need to validate that it is of a specific type. Um, so have a look through the code. Think about the actions that are being performed um we've we've done the form submission what are, what, are, what other actions are happening in the code that we could that we could consider validating against it's not a trick question I, I don't feel bad if you don't get it um but we're going to go down and have a look okay so the answer is something on the admin page yes something on the admin page you are correct the answer is this id okay so this id is the id that is posted to the ajax request to the function that deletes the record and if I was able, let's take the code here. So the reason, this is one of the reasons why I left um, the, the, the queries and the custom tables the way they were. Because let's say I was to pass, and those of you, I'm gonna share a cartoon with you in a second, so you, you enjoyed some humor about this one. But let's say the ID field ended up being something like this. Um, I'm gonna hard code there. <laughs> That's great, Copilot did it for me. Let's say the ID ended up being ID one semicolon drop table WP form submission semicolon. Okay. And I then pass the value of that into this query. That would mean that my query would end up being, and I'm going to put it in quotes here. Oh, sorry, not in quotes, in comments. Delete from WP form submissions where ID equals whatever the value is, and then drop the table. So it's going to completely destroy my database table completely. Okay. Now I, I have to share this with you because I've seen this many, many times over the years. Uh, I should have actually added it to my slides, but it's a little cartoon by, um, by a, a cartoonist called XKCD and it's called Bobby Tables. Um, and I'll read it out to you for those who might not be able to see it, but it's a lady on the phone and she's receiving a phone call from her son's school and says, hi, this is your son's school. We're having some computer trouble. And the mom says, oh dear, did he break something? And the, the school says, in a way, 
did you really name your son Robert quotes brackets semicolon drop table students semicolon dash dash and the mom says oh yes little bobby tables we call him uh, and then the school says, yes, well, we've lost this year's student records. I hope you're happy. <laughs> and then the mom says, and I hope you've learned to sanitize your database inputs. Okay. Uh, so whenever this kind of conversation comes up, I always reference this comic. Uh, I'm going to copy this into the chat so that everybody can have a laugh. But basically, whenever you are receiving data that you're going to run against a database query, you need to validate that data. Um, so the simple way that I can validate this ID, now what am I expecting it to be? I'm expecting it to be a value, an integer value, one, two, whatever, X. In PHP, not specifically WordPress, but in PHP, what I can do is I can just cast it as an integer by doing this. Just open close brackets and the word and the short word int. And what that will then do is if somebody passes anything else but an integer, It'll it'll strip that out and it'll actually make it zero and then it'll it'll it won't work. Um, so then what'll happen is my my query will end up being something like that, which there will be no table record with zero, so the query won't run, um, and it'll just return the result and it won't affect my data. Now what's interesting is what this doesn't do is this doesn't prevent somebody from passing in a higher ID by by intercepting the request. Um, so we'll talk about how we fix that in a second, but for now, this is enough just to validate that the ID that we're expecting is still going to be a, an integer value. And therefore, when we pass it to the table query, it'll, it'll remain an integer and it'll delete a valid record with that ID. Okay. So that was data validation. Any questions on data validation before we move on? There are some good examples in the validating data um, documentation. They talk about safe lists. So only accept dating from a finite and known list of trusted values. That's another good way of doing things. Uh, so a good example of that would be to say, let's say you've got some options on a form. Uh, you would actually create an array of options and say, if the past value is in that options array, then do something. If it's not, don't do anything with it. Um, and it, it's got some good, some good, some good examples down here. Uh, they talk about block lists, format detection, some great examples of how you could do things here. But we just did a very simple example today. Okay. There don't seem to be any questions, so let's move on to escaping data. All right. Now, you might think to yourself, okay, so let's talk about escaping data first. Escaping data is the process of securing any output by stripping out unwanted data. Um, like in this case, they talk about malformed HTML or script text. But now you might be thinking to myself, okay, but if I'm building this plugin and I'm making sure that I am sanitizing my inputs and validating my data, why do I have to worry about escaping data? And so the answer to that is quite simple. We're using WordPress, which powers 40 odd or whatever percent it is of the internet. As a plugin developer, I don't know what other plugins are installed on my client's site. I don't know what themes are installed. I don't know what custom code has been installed. So I don't know what other functionality could inject data anyway. So I want to make sure that even though my plugin code is validated and sanitized, if I output anything to the screen, that is also safe because I have no control over other things that happen. And so escaping functions are basically similar to sanitization functions, but instead of running them on inputs, you run them on anything you're going to output. Okay. So while we're talking about escaping functions, are there any examples you can think of in our code where we could do some escaping? Anybody got any ideas? Not a problem if you don't, I will go through them with you. Okay, so Bob says, while showing the data on the admin page, and that is the correct answer. Okay, so let's have a look at that function. So the WP learn render admin page function, it's on line 138. That's the function that outputs the admin page. You'll see it gets the form submissions into an array, and then it loops through the array and outputs the name, the email, and the ID. And we should escape those outputs so that nothing that might get injected, even though we know we're storing the data safely, we don't know what else might come along at some point in time and affect that data. So we wanna make sure we escape those outputs. So you'll see in the documentation, the very first uh, function they talk about is the escape HTML. 
And that's used anytime an HTML element encloses a section of data being displayed, and this will remove HTML. Then there's escape JS, escape URL. Just like there are multiple sanitization ones, there are multiple escaping options. You can escape raw URL, you can escape an attribute. So if you're doing a class name or a class ID, um, but the most common one is to use escape HTML. You'll see here it's being used on the title. So we can do exactly this on those two fields. So here we can say echo escape HTML and we can escape that. Uh, where's my control C? Here we go. And then do exactly the same on the email. HTML. And we can close that there. And there we go. Uh, I didn't spell that correctly. OK. And all that's going to do is it's going to run the name and the email gathered from the database as it's looping through the submissions and just check, is there any malicious content in here? If so, strip it out. OK. Adrian says, so escaping is like closing or quitting something. Not quite. Uh, so escaping is like, escaping actually comes from, um, well, I don't know where it originally comes from, but the first time I learned about it was when you, um, when you input uh, values into a database that have a, an apostrophe. Um, not an apostrophe, sorry, a single quote. And a single quote in a string in the database causes havoc. So you escape that single quote by using a slash. And it basically then picks it up as like a string. So it's basically a way of, of, of taking anything that is that is malformed or shouldn't be there and basically stripping it out. Uh, just basically, another way you could you could think about it is cleaning up the data. So just as we clean, when we sanitize, san, sanitizing sounds more like cleaning up. You know, I sanitize, I clean it up. Um, escaping is, a, is another way of cleaning it up, but it's before you output it. Um, and so I think they just use the, the term escaping, which comes from a different way of doing things. Uh, so what, what they used to recommend, so this is in the very early days of the web, before we had CMSs and all this kind of stuff, you would you would save the data, but then I think I think when it was saved with the single quote, it was fine. But when you used to have to try and output that data, it used to get problems. So you would escape it by using the slash, and then it would render fine in the browser. So that's where that functionality and that terminology comes from. Okay, so you're always, always sanitizing your inputs, making sure they're clean, and then escaping them, also making sure they're clean before you render them to the browser, because the browser can't handle anything that shouldn't be there. Okay, and then the other thing that I want to escape is the ID, just in case, just in case it's not a it's not a value. Um, and so for that one, I can't remember actually what I used for this. So I'm actually going to cheat horrendously here and go and have a look at my code. Um, there we go. I just did the same integer casting here. So this is this is using the same casting, um, but if, instead of instead of using it for validation, I'm using it for escaping. So I'm making sure that the ID is an ID. Um, and it's output as an ID to the browser, and therefore it'll show as a number in that field. Okay. So we've done sanitization, we've done validation, we've done escaping. Let's make sure this all still works though, <laughs> because we've made a whole bunch of changes, we've tested nothing. So let's go back to our site, um, and let's go back to our submission page, and let's check that everything still works. So let's say... John Deere, because I'm terrible with thinking up names. Uh, we go deer at gmail.com. And we'll submit that. Okay, that seems to have worked. That's excellent. And if we refresh here, there it is, John Deere. So that's all saved correctly. And if we inspect this one and we look at it, it's got the, the correct ID. So that's all working. So now we're sanitizing our data, which is great. Sanitizing our input, should I say. We're escaping our outputs. And we are validating any IDs that are being passed around. So if we hit delete here, uh, that should still work. That's great. And we're happy days. OK, excellent. So those are the top three. Cool. Any questions on all of that before we move on to the next one? And I highly recommend, if you can, after this workshop or when you get a chance to read through all of these pages in the security section, there's way too much to go into in one workshop, so I recommend reading through. Okay, so Adrian says, could you go back to your code around 152? I can do that. There we go. Happy days? Cool. Okay, awesome. I'm going to grab some coffee before we move on. Okay. Now... So far, we've been focusing on pure POST requests. So in other words, a standard form request 
data is submitted to the server, PHP picks it up, does something with it in the code, saves to the database. Uh, when we view the admin page, it connects to the database, gets the data, outputs to the screen. But what happens when you start passing data around in JavaScript land? Okay. So one of the common ways that that is done is using an AJAX request. Uh, another way that that can be done is using uh, the REST API. Uh, I'm focusing on AJAX request today just because they're a little bit simpler than, than managing the REST API. Setting up things in the REST API requires a little bit more information, a little bit more detail. Um, so I'm focusing on AJAX request today. So the, let me go here. Da, 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 da. There are let me take, take this back one step. We've got the form submission working, and that's great. And it's working on the page. But what would happen, let's say, if some other website were to try and submit to this form? First question is, is that possible? And second question is, how do we prevent that? And the answer to the first question is, yes, it is possible. Okay, It is possible for another URL somewhere to submit a post request um, in, in different, in the way different browsers work, and there's a thing called cross origin policy and all these kinds of things that limits that functionality, but it is still possible for something to make an, a standard HTTP post request to a form and try and submit data to it. Um, and this is one of the most common ways that sites are hacked or made vulnerable. Um, it's called uh, um, cross site request for, forgery, where it might pick up whatever the form fields are and submit something to it and then start you know, DDoSing your site or whatever the case may be. So you want to make sure that any requests that are made to this form, to the script that processes the form, or your site at least, that your site knows that the request is made from itself. Uh, and if you're working in, in Laravel land, uh, there's, a, there's a CSRF token that you set up in the form. If you're working in WordPress land, there's a thing called a nonce. So the next page in the security documentation is all about nonces. So if you want to click on that in the security section, so there's, there's sanitizing, validating, scaping, and then nonces. So if you are from the UK or anywhere UK adjacent or anything that knows, when, when I first heard the word nonce, I took a little bit of a second take because to me, a nonce is generally like a stupid, a silly person. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a nickname for, for something. There's other uses for it. But in software terms, a nonce is a number used once. So basically, it's a number that's generated, and it's attached to the form. And then when the form is posted, you can run a check on that nonce. And you can say, is this the nonce that I expect for this form? If so, then let this happen. You can do the same on AJAX requests. You can say, set up the nonce. Um, nonsense sound like nonsense. Yes, you're correct. Um, you can set up the nonce. You can also pass it around in your AJAX request, and then you can check. So it's basically a way of, of the, the code saying, did this request come from a trusted source? In other words, me, myself as the website. Did I make this request, or has it come from somewhere externally? Um, so the two ways that you, the, the, there are two places that we can do it. I've kind of given it away already. The one is on the form. So if we scroll up over here on the form itself, we can implement a nonce and then check it when we post the form. And the other way we can do it is we can set up a nonce. Let me scroll back up over here uh, for the, the Ajax object. We can create a nonce there. And then when we receive that Ajax object, we can pass the nonce to that as well. Okay. So let's start with the form itself. So there's a whole bunch of information here about how nonces work. But the first one I want to show you here is how you add a nonce to a form. So if we scroll down, there's a section called adding a nonce to a form. To add a nonce to a form, you call the WP nonce field and you specify a string representing the action. By default, WP nonce field generates two hidden fields, one whose value is the nonce itself and one whose value is the current URL. In other words, the referrer. In other words, where I'm receiving the data from. So for example, this is what the code might look like. WP nonce field, and then you give it a string. So I'm going to copy this code out. And here in my form, just below the form uh, tag, just above the hidden input, I'm going to open up PHP tags. And I'm going to use WP nonce field. And then for the purposes of this code, I'm going to use, where is it here? Again, I'm cheating outrageously because I can't remember these things. Uh, yeah. So we're going to call WP learn nonce action and nonce field. 
So let me show you what that looks like. Yeah, so it's WP learn form nonce action and WP learn form nonce field. That's all I'm going to do, passing in those two variables. Let me show you what that does to the form. So if we go back to our submission form, you can't physically see anything, but if we inspect this code, you'll see there are some additional hidden fields that have been added to the form. Uh, let me move that out the way. There is the WP learn form nonce field. It has a name of WP learn form nonce field, and then it has a specific value. So that, that value is the nonce value. And then it has the WP HTTP referrer with the value of the current submission form. Okay. Um, so that deletes the inputted information from the database. Um, no, this is for creating the form. We'll talk about the deleting in a second, Linda. So bear with us when we get there. This is just for creating the form. Okay. So now when we post this form, these additional hidden fields are going to be passed. So when we get to, so now I want to show you what happens. If I refresh this page, I'm going to add, let's say, Bob Marley. And I'm going to go bob at gmail.com and I'm going to submit this. And it gives me a success. But if I go into, oh, yeah, sorry. So that all works. That's because I'm not doing any kind of checks. I'm not saying, does this come from a place that I'm happy that it comes from? I haven't done that yet. So to do that, I now need to uh, verify the nonce. So if we scroll down a little bit, we use this check admin referrer function. Okay. So the function checks the nonce and the referrer. And if the check fails, it takes a normal action terminating the script. If you did not use the default name when you created the nonce, you specify the field name. So we did that. We specified the action and the field. So we're going to copy this out. And if we go back here, we're going to go into the process form. And the first thing we're going to do, once we've checked if this form is being posted, before we do the sanitization, we're going to check that it's coming from the same place. And to do that, I'm going to check my code here again. This is what the code looks like. So I'll talk you through what I'm doing here. Okay. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm checking, has that nonce field been set? Is it being posted? So, yeah. So if it's not being posted, or it's not being verified. Nonce field. And then, sorry, I can't, guys can't see because this is a bit small. Big, should I say? There we go. Make it a bit smaller. Hopefully you can read that. So first it's doing, if it's not set, or it's not verified using the nonce field and the nonce action, then you redirect to the error. Okay, so now how do we test that? Well, we can test that by taking the nonce field out. So there we go. So now the nonce field is not going to be set up, but it's going to be calling this functionality. So let's test that out. Let's go back to the submission page. So now let's try and add a new person. Now I'm running out of names. So I'm just going to make it simple. Jane at gmail.com. And if we have a look at this, we'll see there's no nonce fields there. And we submit. And it gives us an error. So now if anybody else tries to submit without the valid nonce field and the valid value for that field, it's going to throw an error. It's not going to try and insert that data. Okay. Now you could just do the verify nonce stuff. Uh, the code that I was referring to here was talking about the uh, checking admin referrer. Um, you can also do the verifying the nonce the way I've done it. There's multiple ways to do it. Um, I prefer using verify nonce just because that's me. <laughs> uh, but you can also you can also use check admin referrer in the same way. Okay. Anybody have questions around how this is working, what it's doing, what it should or shouldn't be doing before we move on? Okay, we don't seem to have any questions there. So now the other thing that we need to look at is well. That's great for the form. So the form is now as secure as we can make it. We're making sure that it's being submitted from the right page by passing the nonce field. We're making sure that the inputs are being validated. We're making sure that the 
um, it, the outputs are being uh, sent, uh, escaped. The last thing we need to think about is this AJAX request. Now, here's another good example. I could, again, make a request to this AJAX request, to the URL, and pass in whatever I want to. And because there's no checking, it's going to give me some errors. So the two things that we need to do, first of all, we need to implement the checking. And that's where we can use the check admin referrer. In this case, it's called check AJAX referrer. Okay. So we use that in the code and you'll see I'm doing this pretty early. Um, so I'm doing it even before I check the ID. I'm saying check the AJAX referrer using the WP Learn AJAX nonce. But now I need to set this nonce up. So where would I do that? I would do that when I'm setting up my, my Learn AJAX object. So over here, I create a nonce value. And then the function in the code, let me just find it quickly. Um, you can do it in the same create nonce way. So let me show you what I'm doing there. Let me find it quickly. Uh, here we go. There's create nonce there. <clears throat> So there I'm creating an AJAX nonce using WP create nonce and then passing in WP learn AJAX nonce. And then I want to pass this nonce to the nonce value here. And I hate saying the word nonce so many times. Um, it ends up becoming rather annoying. Uh, can you make, yeah, I can make it bigger. The only problem was I made it smaller because it was difficult to see the whole line of code we were looking at earlier. Is that better? Okay, awesome. Um, Shay, I'm using Visual Code Studio um, in case you're wondering. Okay, so for the AJAX request, we have the AJAX nonce, which we've created using WP create nonce. And then we just pass in the nonce field name, if you will. And then further down in the code, uh, we're checking against it. We're checking against that WP learn AJAX nonce. Okay, so while we're here, th this is something that I've often struggled with, struggled remembering. And the reason I wanted to show you the two different ways is to show you how the two different things works. So when you're using, when you're setting it up for AJAX, let's focus on that for a second. When you're setting it up for AJAX, it's a case of using WP create nonce and passing in the field name and then passing that in your AJAX object. Then you use the same field name in your function and you do check AJAX referrer, okay? The other thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get this nonce and pass it in the AJAX request itself. Because when we do it now, you're going to see it's going to fail. So let me show you what I'm talking about. With that code implemented, if I go back to my admin page and I refresh this and I try and delete, let's say, Bob over here, you'll see nothing happens. And if you look at my console, it says 403 forbidden. I don't have permission to make this request. And that's because the nonce is not being passed around. So in the admin code, in the admin.js code, we need to pass the nonce in the object of data that is being passed to the URL, okay? Um, and in the code, there used to be, I don't know if they have it here. Um, I don't think they have it on this functionality here, but there used to be a way that you could Let me just find the check AJAX referrer function. Might be in there. There used to be some examples. Um, so you'll see here it's check AJAX refers at referrer the field, and then you'll see it's passing in security. And over here, it's passing in the security in the data. So that's one way you can do it. You can specify your own one. The other way you can do it is the way that I've done it over here. So if we have a look at this admin code, uh, let me find it for you. The default value is underscore Ajax underscore nonce. And then you pass in the nonce to that. So there's two ways that you can do it. I'm going to use this way just to 
just to make sure that I'm happy with it. So let's go back over here. And in this data object, I'm going to pass in underscore Ajax underscore nonce. And then I want to pass in the WP learn Ajax nonce, which is the same value that I've passed in here. And now when I refresh and run this, it should work. So let's test that. And I'm going to remember to do a hard refresh because my JavaScript has changed. There we go. And if I now try and delete this, my form submission is deleted. So now I know my deletion action is protected. So nobody can come from anywhere else and try and make a request to that, that Ajax endpoint and try and delete my code. Okay. Nonces are something that I have struggled with a lot over time. I struggle to remember the function calls. I struggle to remember the formats that they work in. I struggle to remember which one to use for forms and which one to use for uh, Ajax requests and which one to use everywhere else. Um, the one advantage of using, for example, the REST API is the REST API is already authenticated uh, for any kind of admin users. So you don't have to pass nonces around. So I do recommend reading through the nonce documentation, um, making sure you understand it, and then using these simple examples that we've looked at today and, and looking at how the, how the code works and how it passes through. Um, I would also suggest that if anybody has any questions around this, if they're working with their development code, um, feel free to reach out on this plugin repository, open up an issue and say, I can't get the nonsense working, and I'll help you work through that because it's something that I've always, always struggled with. Um, because of how the files work and how the functions work in the naming conventions. Okay. So that is nonsense. Basically making sure that the requests from the current site are uh, verified, coming from the current referrer, uh, and we know that they are safe. Any questions around that before we move on to the last one for today? Cool. I will do that right now. So the Git repository is just github.com, Jonathan Bossinger, WP Learn Security Plugin, or WP Plugin Security. Um, it is also linked at the bottom in the resources page of my, um, actually, of my slides. So you can find the link there. Uh, and then feel free to, to shout if, you, if you're done understanding. I'll, sh I'll share a fun story. Um, I, struggled, I struggled with these nonsense so much that the last time I presented this, I actually forgot how to do it in the workshop. And I had to go back and read the docs. It's just something that I just, I can't get it to stick in my brain. So I always have this code around to remind me how it all works. Okay. And then the last thing we want to cover today is user roles and capabilities. So it says right at the top of this page, if your plugin allows users to submit data, be it in the admin side or the public side, make sure that it's checking for user capabilities. Now, our submission form, we're not too worried about because in our use case, we want to just gather data from people on the public space of our website. However, the deletion form, I don't want another user to stumble across the URL and make a request to it. And there have been a couple of plugin vulnerabilities that have been released lately. Uh, they call it a privilege escalation vulnerability. So let's say you are a um, author user on a WordPress site. If the function that deletes the record for this plugin doesn't check that you are an admin user or not, it, you might still be able to trigger the code. You might not, if you have a look at the code, when I set up the, the admin page, the permission value that I set in the third parameter is specifically manage options. So it won't add the submenu for author users. But if an author user happens to stumble across the URL, to post that data, maybe someone else they know is an admin and they're looking at the code or whatever the case may be, they could create a request using tools. And I've seen this in action. I've actually used the tools that, um, that pen testers use, and I've seen this in action. They could create a request or, or interact with a request and submit the ID to that endpoint and then delete records without your, without your knowledge of it. So whenever you're doing things that are that are submitting data or changing data or making changes to the database, always make sure that you're doing a user capability check. Um, and the code for that is, is basically just a case of doing something called, uh, where is it now? I'm trying to find a good example for it. Um, here we go. It's using the current user can function. 
okay? So current user can basically checks whether this user has the permission to do certain things. And if they do, then allow them to run this code. So let me show you what current user can looks like. Um, in fact, it might be easier if we go to user roles and capabilities. Um, current user can, here we go. So current user can is a wrapper function for user can using the current user object as the user parameter. You basically just call current user can and then pass it in the capability. Um, the capabilities are listed somewhere. I can't remember them now, um, but they are listed possibly in this doc. Um, no, they're not here. Uh, but here's an example, for example, so can the current user edit posts as an, as an option? Or can the, here's the codec reference, it should have all the capabilities. So let's have a look at that. Um, yeah, here they go. Here are all the capabilities. So can they switch themes, edit themes? Uh, and there's a nice table here, if we scroll up a bit, that has the capability and then which admins and users can use it. So let me share this in the in the chat. So it's very handy to have that handy, very useful to have that handy. Um, and so for example, an administrator can upload plugins. An administrator can uh, edit files, edit plugins. Um, or in the case of our um, learn submenu, we've used the manage options capability. So now we need to do the same thing for the deletion. So we under this check, uh, check Ajax referrer, now we can do the current user can. So we can do something like this. We can say if not uh, current user can, and then we can say manage options. And we can say, if that's not the case, then we would want to return some kind of error result or whatever, um, so that it doesn't it doesn't allow this person to. I can't remember how my formatting in Visual Code Studio works. Um, I think it was I think uh, who was it? Adrian said it was right click reformat. I uh, saw so can today. <laughs> um, anyway, so basically what I'm doing is I'm checking, can the current user do the set, have the same capabilities as the person viewing the submenu? If they can't, then return an error. If they can, then carry on with the code. Um, and so whenever you're working with anywhere that's working with data, submitting data, retrieving data, removing data, uh, you should always make sure that your user that's logged in has the capabilities to do that. And you can use the WordPress current user can function to do that and then pass in the capability and, and you're good to go. Okay, the reason we're returning a JSON array here is because it's using uh, Ajax. Um, so we need to return it to the result. Okay, so those are the five things that you should be thinking about when working with plugin security. Um, it's a thing that you do need to be aware of so that you're thinking about it. Um, it, it can become very easy to just write code and get functionality going and you see the functionality working and there's no bugs and you're happy that it's good, but these little vulnerabilities can slip in. Um, so as a wrap up, remember to sanitize early, remember to validate just as early, remember to escape late and escape any output late. Um, remember to use your nonces if you're moving data back and forth, submitting forms, Ajax requests, whatever the case may be. And then remember to check your user roles and capabilities. The other nice thing about this page is there are some common, com common vulnerabilities. And you'll see there's Bobby tables. It's used in the WordPress documentation. Um, so it talks about SQL injection. Um, it talks about cross-site scripting and how you can prevent that. And it's all of these things we've spoken about. There's cross-site request forgery uh, using nonces. Um, and then there's some links at the bottom for how to stay current. So there's a WordPress security white paper, the WordPress security release. Uh, and then the Open Web Application Security Project, or the OWASP, which is basically the top 10 security vulnerabilities. Um, it's quite an in-depth document, but I do recommend reading it and understanding how these things work. And the more that you can read and understand these concepts, the more you'll start thinking about them when you're writing code. Um, and then going back to what I said earlier, always be checking. Trust no one. Trust nothing. Don't trust any user data. Don't trust your own data. Um, any data that you're working with, make sure that you don't trust it. Okay, that's my bit for today. Does anybody have any questions around anything?
Um, I'm sorry that I was a little bit flustered today. As I say, I'm a bit tired. So I, I do apologize if anything wasn't clear, but if anybody has any questions, they're welcome to ask now. Okay, so that's my bit for today. Thank you all for joining me. Um, as I've mentioned in previous sessions, if you do come across this and you're watching this on WordPress TV later and you do have questions, you can find me at the moment still on Twitter uh, as Twitter is slowly going through some changes. Um, the recording will be posted to WordPress TV tomorrow, um, hopefully during the course of the day tomorrow, if not tomorrow, at least by Monday. Um, if you have questions, you can find me on Twitter. You're welcome to also send me messages in the Make WordPress Slack. It's a Slack channel specifically for folks contributing to WordPress, and you're always welcome to ask me questions there. Um, and then the other thing that I mentioned is, is last year is this year I'm planning on doing some sort of ask me anything sessions. Um, I've already got one great uh, question that um, Michelle Moore, I think her name is, sent me. Um, and I'm going to be looking at that soon. So if there's anything that you're struggling with, if it's nonsense that you're struggling with and you want me to go through that again in a session, you're welcome to give me a shot. Um, but please do let me know. And if you have any ideas for any workshops that you want to see, uh, any topics in the WordPress development space that don't quite make sense to you or you struggle with, please do send them my way. Uh, you have my email address. It is just my name, jonathanbossinger at gmail.com. You're welcome to send me any suggestions or ideas. I don't mind uh, uh, giving folks my email address. I can't guarantee I'll answer it straight away, um, but I'm always open to new ideas for workshops and tutorials. Um, I'm probably going to do a tutorial video on this topic um, that's a bit more sort of structured and, and, and down and to the point. Um, so that you can review that as well at a later stage. Once again, Happy New Year to everybody. It's, it's lovely to see you all again and uh, enjoy the rest of your Thursday and the rest of your week. Thank you. Cool. Uh, how does this work again? <laughs>